In my video about Kubernetes, we defined orchestration as a centralized way of managing n containers on however many physical machines. But the orchestrator that we built at fly.io doesn't quite work that way. In fact, ours is decentralized, which is weird because that central control is typically a huge part of what it means to orchestrate workloads. So in this video, let's talk about some of the core anatomy of an orchestrator so we can better understand why the heck we did this. So how might one build an orchestrator from the ground up? Well, for now, we're going to set aside fly.io's implementation because we have special needs and we'll get to that later. So let's say that we have a collection of physical machines. We'll call these workers. And these workers are responsible for running our containers. Now, who tells these workers what workloads to run, right? Who's in charge here? Well, that's where things get centralized, all right? You'd likely have a server with an API that workers can pull to get the latest jobs, jobs like create a new container, right? And they can grab them from the stack and then release them when they're done. So with our workers checking for and running jobs from the API server, we now have a central way of managing our workloads, which is awesome. But th this orchestrator kind of leaves something to be desired, and we can do better than that. You see, having our workers continuously pull the API for new jobs and then just pulling them off the stack willy-nilly isn't really the best way to go about it, because what if one of those workers is overloaded and short on memory, right? In that case, it should probably hold off and chill out for a bit. We need to be smart about assigning jobs, and that is where a scheduler comes in. Now, I'll be honest, I hate the term scheduler because it really has less to do with dictating when a job runs, but rather where or on which worker. And this can be one of the most finicky parts of any orchestrator. Of course, you could make this very simple and just limit the number of jobs any worker can take on, but real orchestrators don't work that way. You see, schedulers are kind of like an all-seeing eye that know which workers have capacity to take on a job. So in our example, we could change our API to have another endpoint where workers could report their status, like, hey, I'm doing great, or eek, I'm at capacity. From there, it's just a matter of having our API decide which worker is best for the job. And with that, we have a very basic orchestrator. Now, I want to shift our attention to two mainstream orchestrators to better understand why we didn't choose them for fly.io. First, there's Kubernetes. We all know her, right? Why didn't she get picked? Well, a few reasons, but the biggest of which is probably because Kubernetes is built for containers and we don't run containers, all right? We run fly machines because reasons. But you know what can run fly machines is Nomad. And we actually used this for a while. It's very lightweight and it can run all sorts of workloads, not just Docker containers. We love Nomad, all right? We have no complaints. But fly.io is not a typical Nomad user. And eventually we outgrew it. And this is why. One reason is that Nomad typically uses bin packing to decide how to delegate jobs to workers. Bin packing aims to accomplish this. Given a series of variably sized objects and fixed size containers, fit all the objects in the smallest number of containers. Imagine you're moving to a new apartment and you've rented a moving truck. Well, if you don't pack your stuff efficiently, you might run out of room and have to rent a second truck and that's expensive. So you arrange it in such a way that it can fit in as few trucks as possible. Bin packing is just that for computers. And as we've discovered, it's not a great solution for platforms like fly.io. You see, those variably sized objects that we're talking about in our case are your applications. And if we tried to cram as many of you on as few physical machines as possible, your apps would be fighting for resources and you'd have to contend with some very noisy neighbors. And you don't want that, right? You want legroom. But that's not the only problem we faced with Nomad. A big requirement for us was the ability to roll out changes to multiple regions. Now, Nomad can have distributed clusters, but they still require a single central group of servers to operate, and that just doesn't scale well for our purposes. To work with Nomad's federated clusters, we'd essentially need another orchestrator to orchestrate the regional orchestrators. So how do we schedule workloads at fly.io? There has been a lot of literature on cluster schedulers dating all the way back to the 1980s, which we promptly ignored and did our own thing. For good reason. What we came up with was FlyD. 
FlyD works very differently than both Kubernetes and Nomad. Where typical orchestrators would rely on a central scheduler to keep track of the status of its workers and dole out jobs accordingly, FlyD operates more like an auction, where the workers keep track of their own status and then make bids for jobs. Here's how it works. Let's say that you want to scale up your number of machines in Miami, so you would run this command. In this case, Fly Control, our CLI, creates jobs with the machine's API. And you might also hear us refer to this as flaps. It, it stands for something, don't worry about it. Anyway, the machine's API then broadcasts this job to the workers in Miami saying, hey, I need somebody to spin up a bunch of machines who can take this on. The key difference here is that the workers, not the API server, keep track of their own status. This is what makes it decentralized. So as I said, the job is broadcast and then those workers make a bid for it. And then the API just selects the best offer. The other thing to note is that a job either succeeds or it fails. There is no pending state and there's no queuing. This means that neither the machine's API nor FlyD will retry the job when it fails. And this is a good thing. What would happen on Nomad is when a job failed in a particular region, the scheduler would retry it in another region, which is not necessarily what you want, right? You asked for a machine in Denver, not Dallas. So Fly lets this responsibility fall to the client, which is whatever is calling the machines API, like Fly Control or the dashboard. Now, to be clear, we are not saying that this is the single best way to do orchestration. Consider what Fly is doing. In most cases, orchestrators are built to manage a relatively small number of apps. Even at huge enterprises, you're probably not running a million apps that a platform like Fly is running, all right? Not that it's a competition, it's just a different problem and one that our decentralized model accommodates. There is an excellent blog post that adds more color to our decision about our orchestrator that I have linked down below, so definitely check that out. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.